about an, another another forbidden um, portal. Another hole that was busted. Another forbid, for, yeah, no, another forbidden pathway, if you will. Um, <laughs> uh, it was because we didn't get a chance to talk about it. We, we ended up talking about it a little bit last night, but um, I, I know uh, Matt has been mainstream. Matt has been on the um, the uh, the the social medias uh, talking about this, but the forbidden portal has been opened with uh, New Japan and AEW. Uh, Kenta, I, I, this, is, this is the problem that we do the show Mondays and Tuesdays and we keep forgetting what happened last Wednesday, which is like probably the most important wrestling night uh, <laughs> as far as multitude of things going on. Um, but uh, 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 but yeah, that was the big thing was uh, Kenta came over, uh, attacks Moxley after Moxley made an appearance over on New Japan Strong. Um, I, 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 this... Uh, I'm I'm excited. I'm always excited about these multi-promotional tie-ins. Um, starting, of course, with the Impact Wrestling uh, AEW thing. Um, I really hope this means Tony Khan and Tony Schiavone are going to buy time on um, on the New Japan, maybe. <laughs> so, um, but uh, I, I I know I know Mike, you're not terribly a fan of Kenta necessarily. Oh no, I'm a fan of Kenta. Mm-hmm. I'm a fan. I'm a huge fan of Kenta. I loved him when he was in WWE too. I you know it's just. I I wish I, I had this conversation with someone I forget who it was I, I it might have actually been Garza um, I feel like a lot of this stuff is taking up a lot of time from the actual AEW talents like like because I, I, I mean yeah it's cool it's really cool that you know you got your you got some of my impact on your AEW you got some of my new some of your New Japan on AEW but. There's a reason stuff like massive crossovers are very difficult to do. Yeah. Like like the fact that stuff like the Avengers or or Endgame works at all is the biggest magic trick you'll see in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. You have to try and give equal time to everyone. And I, I feel like the more people we bring in, while cool for a lot of people if you're a fan of the people who you've been watching on AEW, they might get left out in the cold. Always a concern. Um, But I think, you know, it doesn't, like, aren't we on a, on a cool part here where we're kind of bringing back that anything can happen, you know, when everybody was kind of switching back and forth between WWE, WCW, like it is the Monday night wars again. You know, between people, you know, who's going to show up on Wednesday night for the most part? I mean, it's mostly AEW kind of pulling this. Well, but uh, I mean, it is and it isn't because it's not like the companies are against each other. There's clearly agreements. This isn't like when Lex Luger jumped to Nitro or when Jericho came true. to Raw. And it's Those not people actually switch companies and were paid, were like they they were gone from the other promotions. And it's not this gonna like good. I don't, I don't know. This is just like when um. This is more comparable to me when um, ECW first came on to Raw mm-hmm. in, like, 96, 97. Mm-hmm. Like, that's what's more comparable to me. Like, it's a talent-sharing thing. I just hope that the Impact stars and if there are any more New Japan stars, that they don't get kind of, like, overwhelmed by the AEW of it all. Yeah, I, I think one of the like one of the main things I think when you know hearing just so much of a cohesiveness, hearing so much of a cohesiveness with how everything is happening, <clears throat> I think one of the main things that they could do is try to maybe see if there's a way to match some of that time that you're competing with the Monday Night Raw that's going like three hours or something like that, and just like Man Mike said, you know, being able to, you know, being able to you know kind of look at where things are going, how do we share this time equally? You know, we're working with Impact. You know, now we're, you know, we're teasing things with New Japan. Yeah. So I think if we can kind of equal out that time, give more times. I think they have a really solid product right now that it won't feel like it's lagging like a lot of times what we see with WWE. So, you know, I feel like if there's a way they can get to that, I think we can have even more of a well balanced, especially now that we see, you know, so many companies now coming together under that one product, though. No, absolutely. Uh, it, 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 and I think it's, it's creating... Other opportunities like like private party, I don't feel like have had a lot of. There's a lot of tag teams on AEW, and private party would be one of them that probably like is getting lost in the shuffle, a lot. So having them go over to Impact Wrestling to feature in that tag division, which I mean, 
I don't think their tag division is doing too great on Impact because like they're they're they were they were getting number number one contender with a team of uh, what was it uh, Alex Shelley and James Storm, which was seemed like some random picks to fill in a division. So if that's the case, and well, wasn't some... it wasn't it the Guns and Saban had to bow out for some reason? Yeah, I think Saban, I think Saban had some injury issues. So. Yeah, so so I mean, so I mean, but but that you couldn't put it in our team in there seems a little suspect to me, and I, and I don't know, I I don't have a, a deep knowledge of what their their attack roster looks like over there. Obviously, they just left lost the um, radicals. Yeah, no, yeah, the the MSK that just came over to NXT. So I, I know they would have been a big part of that. So, um, but uh, but but again, it, it, it's it's more place for that to to kind of play. So, um. From the chat room, I want I want to mention real quick. I think Tina is the one saying, maybe it was Alex uh, about. Uh, I'm waiting for Jordan Grace to pop up over there on AEW. Yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I I don't think you're gonna see any no. women. No, I think be- because because there's well no they're centering it basically around Kenny Omega. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's I mean that's the like big that, that's the point. whole point of this. Like yeah. and, and the tag division because it's the Good Brothers, which they're obviously doing some crossover with that. That's fine. Um, and, and also, like, you know, think we're still on kind of the first introductory shock, shock value of, you know, a couple months in on this AEW, exper- or, I'm sorry, this Impact Wrestling experiment, now the New Japan one, which really is probably going to be kind of specific because they are, this is leading up to a match at the end of the month on New Japan Strong. Um, so, and I don't know if that is going to factor into the new Roku show, perhaps, um, like I don't because I think it's Thursdays and I don't know what that content is going to be for New Japan yet. So, um, but uh, it, for, oh, also for those who are curious, the New Japan show on Roku, most people should be able to watch that. You do not need a Roku device to watch Roku channel things. So okay, that's good to know. So I I don't know not necessarily like putting on your Apple TV. Maybe you can AirPlay it. I don't know or or Chromecast or something. But if you have the Roku app on your phone, I know you can pull it up. And I think they're putting Roku apps on some other devices. If that makes sense. Um, and it's a it's a it, it's an ad based um channel that they do. Um, you know, much like if you're just tuning into Peacock, not you know, not signed up for it or something like that. But um, I don't know. I like it. it, it it's especially. Like I feel like some of those 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 crossovers were kind of already happening on a low level because I feel like I'm watching Danny Limelight's career unfold in front of my eyes across about three different programs. Uh, so <laughs> what did I say? He's like he's like he's like my my favorite. Like I have a favorite enhancement cha- talent on on uh, Tuesday nights. Um, and, and it's fun to see him like do different kind of matches. And, and actually, he's 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 growing up from that. Like he's getting some wins on on Dark now, actually. And it's kind of interesting to see those and uh, your buddy Nick Camarado, um, mm-hmm. over there just get. Yeah, he's he's with the Nightmare Family now. Yeah, so just, just... I'm hoping he gets to beat up Shaq. <laughs> there you go. Oh wow, that's a that's a big po- that's a big choice. <laughs> yes. That that's that's my hope, or or at the very least. At least slap Charles Barkley in the face. I, I, so we, we, that's got to be like uh, that's uh, that's your that's your like second degree of Kevin Bacon and be like, listen, man, I e fetted with the guy that slapped Shaq. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, mm-hmm. that's your new introduction on this show. So, oh no 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 no! It's still Slammy Award winning. Oh, that's right. I know I didn't do the Slammy Award winning. It's this 